Let me let me just read you one of the questions that we got about this. Okay. Uh, that in this past week, Here, this is a question from a, an Earth Sky reader. The sun will probably continue to increase activity into the next year, and the sun could well throw out a Carrington event level CME. That's a coronal mass ejection. It's a chunk of material from the right. sun. And if it were to hit the Earth directly, it would have dire consequences. Our power grids and internet can be gone in a flash. Right. Got a comment now, about that? There are effects that will come from large scale CMEs, large scale geomagnetic storms. As I said, you know, a G5 is the largest that they go up to. The Carrington event was a G5. The one that we had last week was a G5. But the difference from the time of the Carrington event and to now, and even going back to the 1920s and 1999, we've had storms hit. We had the 1920s, they called the New York storm, where it did the same thing. It ignited power or, or telegraph cables in buildings in New York and in Russia, caught them on fire. 1999, we had the Quebec storm. It actually shut down power in Quebec. But what we have done different today is we understand geomagnetic induced currents, which come from this. And what you have to look at, if you think of how electricity is generated, you take a magnet, horseshoe magnet, you pass a wire through the magnet, it induces a current through the wire. Well, the transmission lines act as the wires. The earth, the magnetic field is surrounding them. When a CME hits, it causes that magnetic field to fluctuate up and down. That's the same thing as passing the cable back and forth through the magnet. So it induces currents on the power lines, which feeds through the transformers and the other electrical apparatus. In the old days, we really didn't have the ability to monitor when a big CME was fixing a hit. Today, NASA has all the satellites. We've got a very good monitoring system watching the sun, telling us, okay, you have a storm fixing to come in. With this advance notice, the electrical utilities have the ability to do what's called load shedding, load studies to sort of lessen the loads on the system so that when you do get these overcurrents coming through your cables, it does not overload the transformers because they've already got less load on them and they can handle that extra load coming into them. Now, it does do damage on small systems. You may have outages and substations that may not have enough protection and they go out, but it's something that's relatively quickly fixed. Now, the communications, your internet, and everything else, this is coming from your satellites. And when these storms hit, they will affect the satellites. Now, this past storm, we affected the GPS of the tractors and farmlands. And they had a few issues where the tractor didn't receive the GPS and it couldn't plow the field. Well, there's really not much we can do on that right now. There are ways that they can harden the satellites in order to give better protection to ensure a more continuous broadcast of signal. On Earth, we have the same thing where you have antennas for radios. You may get the power flowing through them, uh, standing waves coming down, creating havoc on that. But it would be short-lived as the storm goes away, your signals come back. I've actually had communications with a radio operator saying that, you know, it would randomly come on and off. And it was due to the, the, the storm coming in. But it's not long-term. So we have the ability oh. to detect and prepare now. And so... But what you're saying is that technology has advanced yes. and we, we do have this fleet of sun observing spacecraft, yes. you know, looking at the sun constantly and monitoring what's going on with the sun. So if we know that a solar storm has occurred and that a big CME is coming, we have the ability to do something about it right. in the way that when the story about the Carrington event first started coming out, which, you know, in my memory, it was maybe... 20 years ago, yeah. 25 years ago, that people started talking about the Carrington event and what might happen there. Right. But since then, we have some things now that we didn't have then, like those sun observing spacecraft. And right. like, didn't you tell me that there were lots of studies that have been yes. done on what to do about this? So one of the big things, my background before I became a professor, I spent almost 30 years in the electrical industry, transformers, substations. And during this time, I'm a member of what we call the Transformer Committee, which writes the standards, which regulates how transformers are built, how you design substations, how you set them up. And there has been a very big push for how do we handle geomagnetically induced currents? How do we handle solar storms? What do we do to prepare for them? 
So that is a, a push that's going not just in North America, it's worldwide. So IEEE here, IEC in Europe, everybody is looking at this and we're getting better at how we can control the load flow, how the electricity is divided up on the grid. So if we need to shed it to more one area that would be less affected, we can do this. And that way right. you're lessening the chance of over voltages, over currents, shutting down the system. And so even with in that... protection. Huh? No, you go ahead. No. Even inside the electrical components, our transformers, we are hardening them in there. We're coming up with better designs, better materials that can handle the higher loads without the chance of breakdown on it like you would have in the old days. So there's a lot right. of work going on to protect us against these types of events. Right. And so the Carrington event, like I tried to find out today, like we had the biggest flare of Solar Cycle 25 so far on May 14th, and that was an mm -hmm. X8. Yes. And so how big was the Carrington event flare? Do you happen to know how big it was? I believe the, the Carrington was all the way up to the X10. Okay. If I'm, I, so, I would have to go back and, and confirm. I know on the G scale, they called it the G5, which is as high as it goes. But right. when it was the X-Class flare, flare, it was one of the largest X-Class flares that we would have seen. Right. And so just what you're saying is just that, you know, with this awareness has come more boosting up of our power systems and that, you know, people people of goodwill have yeah. been trying to, you know, work to protect us from right. solar storms. And so the right. big fear that's going around the Internet of solar storms is kind of unwarranted is that what you're saying people yes. were not death by it's solar storm is... yes <laughs> right. there may be okay. you know disruptions you may have a few days where you can't get on your cell phone and you can't get on the internet which may be a good thing but yes you know they there will be disruptions but they're not going to be long-term apocalyptic destruction of the world type scenarios we can right. handle we can adjust for it and we can go forward and how long are we talking about? Are we talking about uh, that we might have outages on the scale of days, weeks, months? Yeah. What, what's... Worst case scenario, okay, we get too much of an overload. You shut down a transformer. You would be out for probably a week or so because they'd have to take the substation, pull the transformers out, relocate a new one, bring new ones in, set them up. But even during this time, they may be able to, and this is the nice thing about the new, what we call smart grid. They're able to isolate it the dead sections and reroute the power around it so they can compensate for these outages and still provide power. So you'll be out, but not nowhere near as long as a month or stuff like this. Um, okay. When you're okay. talking for the long term, you know, you look at hurricanes and storms like that to where they blow down the power poles. They, okay, now you've got problems because you're having to go back and reconstruct. On these, you're taking out the electronics which is easily replaced and put back in and you up and going. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So we're not going to go back to the 17th century no. as one of our commenters no. said. No, uh, we won't have that. Sometime. Okay. Yeah. He said he'd been storing up food for all this time and he welcomes going back to the 17th <laughs> century. <laughs> sort of like, yeah, I well, guess. <laughs> I, I grew up on a farm where we were fully self-sufficient back in the 70s. And um, yes, it was a fun time, but I do like having the convenience of today, not going out milking the cows and growing the garden. And yeah, it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have power. Uh, I, I'm in Austin, Texas. We didn't have power here for four days during a freak snowstorm. Yeah, and the, the 2021 storm. Mm -hmm. That was that's pretty rough. Four days that without one power. was what I call the the perfect storm. Everything yes. fell into place at the right moment to create this havoc. I actually did a, a article on that as well, what led up to the, the downfall of the grid in Texas. And it was a very interesting story, but that was just the perfect storm, you know, once yeah. in a lifetime type deal. And, you know, even during that storm, like I live close to the downtown area and I could look across my totally dark neighborhood and the downtown buildings were all lit up. Yes. So they, they had some kind of emergency power. They have the emergency system. backup systems uh, right. on site that would run and, and supply the power. Right. My daughter never lost power because she's she's next to a bunch of city buildings. And so, yep. so she if you're had close power to the, the whole places time. with the critical infrastructure, you're pretty much guaranteed you'll have power. Right. If you live right, out right. in the sticks, as we call it, you're pretty much on your own. 
So how about, so the Carrington event was uh, 1859. Have there been any other events that happened in Earth's history that were comparable or bigger? If, if you go way, way back, before we had any knowledge of solar storms, any recording capability, there was the Miorki event, I think 773. Mm -hmm. And the way we know about this is actually from looking at carbon dating inside tree rings. And according to the data pulled from this, it was larger than the Carrington event. But and like so I said, there any... was no recording capability. You, you didn't have men running around that could be affected by the electricity. But it did show that the solar storm was a humongous magnitude, greater right. than the Carrington. Okay. So that does happen. So if a, another humongous storm came along, is yeah. it the same situation that we just, it's affecting same the electronics? Situation. As long as we get prepared, we get the notice it's coming, we can prepare the systems to minimize the damage and outages that can occur. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us. Certainly. Look. It's, we get so many comments about this, and people are so terrified of solar flares. Yes. And, uh, and, and I've been trying to, you know, I, I've been hearing for decades that they're working on the problem. Yep. And, and, and so they are. And we, so, we actually have guest speakers, the professionals in the industry, they come and give lectures at our meetings telling us, you know, the latest, greatest, what's coming up. So it is a ongoing um, system where they're really focusing on this and preparing for it. So you're saying we're we're safe now. We might have some inconveniences or we might yes. have some temporary outages, but things are getting even safer. Yes. Okay. We're on the right path. Uh I, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you so much, David. I Certainly. really appreciate it. Thank, and uh, I want to thank you and I, uh, David Wallace, who is an electrical engineer at Mississippi State University. And I also hope those of you who are watching will join us on Mondays at 1215 Central for our weekly live stream. And David, maybe we can have you back on again sometime to Anytime. talk about uh, Love geomagnetic talking. storms and, and power grids. We can thank tell you, you so much. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Thank you.